and welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me, where today I'm doing something I don't often do, uh, but sometimes I, I end up doing this. I'm going to talk about an anime series that I haven't finished watching, because I've decided to drop it. I decided to stop watching this show. Every so often I get complaints about doing this online, uh, but the reason I do it is because there's we all have media that we don't finish. Novels that we haven't finished reading, um, TV series we watch a few episodes of here and there, we never actually get back in and finish. But we still have opinions about them. We, we still have something to say about them. And more importantly, this is not a show where I I watched a bunch of, well, I watched some of it and thought, oh, that, that's cool, I'm planning on finishing it. This is a show that I probably will not finish. And I want to discuss that and talk about why that is. The show is called Recreators. Uh, it's an anime series in which anime characters begin appearing in real life and begin confronting their creators about their own existence and why these creations were put into these often hellish worlds and existences at the whims of us. The series quickly introduces a number of characters, you see them behind me, who have all come from various anime universes. Part of the fun of the show is seeing different styles of characters collide. So you have a sort of a shonen antagonist character, you have a serious detective character, you have a, um, uh, a, a serious you know, knight from a fantasy series, so forth and so on. You have a magical girl. And seeing just all, you know, and they all become people who all have to interact. And on the one hand, while they are still anime characters, by coming into the real world and interacting with other people and having a new context, that also, um, I don't want to say it changes their personality, but it provides an extra dimension to their personality. You know, you're not just seeing how they react when, when faced with demons, right? So, what's cool about Recreators is that it does deal with the sort of some of the larger identity questions around this, around the idea of being a creation and how it would feel to realize this and some of the, the connotations thereof. I do like the... Um, I really... I felt the characters were very well drawn, so to speak. Um, they, they're not simply one-dimensional archetypes. They have plans and they do things to an extent. Uh, it is also a, a varied set of characters, which I think was important for something like this. One of the problems I have with the story, though, is that I got nine episodes in and the characters are, were still pretty straightforward. Granted, that is part of the point of the show, is that these characters are designed to be a certain thing, to serve a certain purpose, and so you put them in this new context, and they basically continue serving that purpose. Um, you know, they're not blind to what's going on around them, but they still have that basic personality and drive that they had before. That said, one of the problems is the lack of variety in the character personalities. There are... Um, there are several characters that all fulfill kind of similar functions in the show. And thus, I'm kind of wondering what they're there for. Uh, granted, again, I'm only a third of the way through a 22-episode series. Well, almost halfway through. But still, I'm watching these characters, and they're just kind of there for a while. And understand, I am basically... Um, I am basing this off of comparing it to other shows which introduce a lot of characters and they quickly do a lot of things. A lot of these characters do not... Uh, the main characters in this show are generally pretty passive. They come into the, this world and then they just start speculating. And there's a lot of this show of characters standing around discussing what the bad guys did and why they might have done that and what might be the right thing to do and what might not be the right thing to do without actually doing anything. And this goes on for multiple episodes. That gets frustrating. Comparing that, again, to, say, a series like Gundam, which will have a lot 
or a franchise like Gundam, which will have quite a few conversations of characters standing around talking, but they are um, interstitials between other things happening. You know, those are breathers between the, the characters actually engaging with and acting on their environment, whereas the characters in here are generally trying to do as little as possible to, to change things. And that turns into sort of a weakness in the story. Coupled with the fact that you have these characters, they're just kind of, some, some of the characters are just kind of there. <clears throat> the point at which I stopped, to give you an example of this, is a point at which, and again, I'm trying to avoid spoilers here, um, a particular character is confronted with another character and says, basically, there are two paths I could follow based on what you say. Here is a reason why I should follow path one, and here is another reason why I should follow path one. And then the character goes off and follows path two. With no explanation, no reasoning, but it's clear that that is where they wanted that character to be based on where they wanted the plot to go. And that was just intensely frustrating to me. Um, a character just does something that is a kind of stupid. Um, and I, I watched enough to verify that this wasn't simply, you know, a feint. Um, that there wasn't more to this. And that is just difficult writing. That, 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 is, that is difficult to swallow writing. When a character does something for plot reasons, not because... Even when the character has expressed, you know, why they would do one thing, but they do another thing for the, for the plot. So, uh, um... I, I am generally impressed with the animation in this. Um, it is obviously a high-budget concept, and it is a, I would say, a medium to high-budget show. So a lot of the fight sequences don't feel like hugely epically animated, um, but there's enough animation to make it feel exciting and adventurous. And there's definitely enough motion and energy to the combats to be exciting. Um... It's one of those things where they'll get into a fight, but there's a, a quite a bit of, of cutting away to other characters observing the fight and talking about it, and not actually showing you the fight that, as, as it's going on. Um, contrast with, say, Dragon Ball Z, where you cut away, but then you cut back to the fight, right? You know, that is a pause in the fight. That isn't a, you know, we can't afford to spend 15 more seconds animating this combat. You just hear it in the background while you watch a character, you know, mentioning something. So, that said, it doesn't detract from the show. It's one of those things where, again, there's only so many animators available to animate, you know, all this stuff. So I think they did a good job of balancing that. Um, I do like the personalities of the characters. I do think that they, um, they created characters that you care about and you want to root for. Uh, with both the, the good guy, with both the protagonist and the antagonist. I don't want to get too into good guys, bad guys, because, again, no spoilers, but that turns out to be more complex. Um, but that is this kind of a thing. Um, that is kind of a, a, an issue I have with the show, is that the characters, um, while varied, don't really do much for a lot of those nine episodes. There's... Also the difficulty that they write in one big reveal, which, in order for it to happen, requires a character to be passive in a way that is very typical for anime, and that feels unnecessary. And you have to wait to find out what that is, and the whole time you're thinking the character is being a typical anime character, and I should point out, this character within the show is not an anime character. He is a real person, right, in the, in the world in which the anime characters are showing up. This person, though, is doing a very typical protagonist thing. And the problem is, when you don't hint that that's coming, when you don't give the character something else to do, when you don't give the character other redeeming qualities, it comes across as poor writing. It's like writing a story. I had a, a friend of mine who wrote a story where um, you're describing something from the first-person perspective of a character who turns out to be dead. And the problem is that's very hard to pull off. And the story felt frustrated, frustrating to read because of how awkwardly 
it was structuring you know sentences and observations and so forth so as to you know get around that you know anything you would you would expect to get to that ending which made it a i don't want to say a bad story but a story that you would not want to read that's the problem i had with three creators is that the protagonist is completely passive for a large portion of time and again you understand why later on um you know, I, I should say they they give you a reason why he's passive but the what the, the a better way to do that is to give him other things to do to give him other personality quirks other things he's trying to accomplish etc instead of just having that laid out there for episode after episode after episode so I, mm, um, there are some things that you, there are some shows you like, some shows you don't like, and some shows you're just kind of neutral on. This is none of those. This is one of those shows where you like some things and others just really get to you. That's what I feel with recreators. There's just too many negatives for me to enjoy the positives of the show. So I'm stopping here. Um, props for the animation, props for the character designs. Um, the writing does go interesting places. The writing does, um, you know, characters do interesting things. There are plot twists that I, I, I won't say I didn't see coming, but I was impressed that they went there with some of the characters and some of the plot twists. Um, so kudos in a lot of ways. But for me, it just doesn't come together. Um, so I hope that you find this useful. And one of the reasons I do these videos is because I think this is the kind of show that will appeal to some people. That some folks aren't going to have my hang-ups over those things. And are going to watch through. And I'm sure there are interesting plot things later on in the show. Um, but it's too much for me. And uh, again, so I hope this is helpful. Thank you for watching. And until next time, I hope you will watch more interesting anime.